Hello, my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel, and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 21st of June. Today we have a lot of updates, so let's start. And today we will continue with our Lysychansk agglomeration with this area. As you can see, the West Sources map has been updated. Now they're showing us that this entire area uh, from Vrubivka, Nikolaevka, Laskutovka, Alexandrovka, Mirna Dalina, Ustinovka, Toshkovka, all this area, Gorska, Zalto is under the Russians. If we take a look at the Russian sources map, we can see the same picture, but with much more icons on this area, showing us that there are a lot of actions are happening today, these days, these hours, and maybe these minutes. A lot of things happened, and sometimes uh, the flow of this news uh, tells me that there is a, such a big mess in this area, so you can't even imagine. So let's start discussion, let's start understand what's going on there. Uh, first of all, as you can see, both maps are not showing us that Vavcharovka is under the Russians. If we're talking about the Russian source map, you see that this area is in the gray zone. Mm, uh, though we had a lot of confirmation that this town is under Russian mm, control, but for now it's still in the gray zone. If we take a look at the west source map, this area is showing that there were some bombings and uh, shellings and so on. But I, I think that uh, my, I'll give you my opinion that Vavcharovka is in the Russians. So I'm sure that in a day or two we're going to see updates because more and more confirmations are coming from this area. I think that maybe they're just clearing operation and maybe some part, like say like north part, like this one part, uh, is still under the Ukrainians. So we'll follow this area, we'll try to understand. Furthermore, let's discuss about Severodonetsk, um, Voronova, Borivsky today. Uh, the governor of this area announced that the forces from Severodonetsk got an order to retreat. So I understand that in a day or two, all these forces, all who can, not like all forces, because I'm sure that none of, not all of them are able to retreat, but all those who can are going to retreat and leave this bulk of the river and is going to um, retreat towards Lysychansk. Uh, this is about this area. Uh, now let's talk about uh, Nikolaevka. If you remember, yes, I told you that the Russians, uh, at least as I, as I, as I think, shouldn't uh, start their offensive uh, towards Lysychansk. Uh, to be more precise, they shouldn't start their offensive operation towards Malaria Zantsova because it's very difficult, it's very dangerous being uh, attacked from both sides, from both industrial zones. I told you that the best solution would be to stop in this area and to move towards uh, from Nikolaevka towards Ivano Darevka and try to do something with, with Verkhokamyanska, with this area. This was, this was my plan, that, like the best, the, the most the safe position. Uh, this plan had only one minus in this, in, in this particular situation, is timings. Of course, to move to the west might take a lot of time, at least a few days, if you are if you're moving with the regular force, with tanks, with support, with artillery, with air support and so on. It might take two days and these two, two days can solve everything uh, in the if we take a look if we take a look at the russian sources map they put an icon on this area right in front of the french block and this industrial zone this look at, they call this black like promotion and there is some updates from the russians uh, who is in this area that the russians entered lysychansk and now they're fighting in the suburbs or on the edge of this town this icon means nothing if we can say that it's something like softly like to put somewhere and I, th I, th I understand that the author of this map just put it to show that uh, there is some update uh, if uh, this update was published by one of the uh, very um, fam famous Russian reporter and he just told us that the Russians already in, in town in suburbs of Lysychansk and that he was planning to publish more updates maybe this evening maybe tomorrow or so on so this is like the uh, situation before the main analysis that would like to discuss you one of the most important updates regarding this area regarding this territory is that the Russians started bombing the bridges and they start to bomb bridges that connect Lysychansk with the big land. Furthermore, now let's return back to the operation of encirclement Lysychansk oil refinery. Yesterday, uh, not yesterday, this morning, this night, this morning, there was a very important update, but there were no more information about that, just an important update, and the Russian source of map has published this icon that somehow, somehow, the Russians 
took control over Verkhny Kamenka. So you see that according to my encirclement plan, as I supposed it's like the best solution for the Russians, I suppose that they would plan they would go towards Verkhomyanska, this area. But uh, there was a report from one of reporter from one of the war press that the Russians managed to take Verkhomyanka, at least the south part. If we take a look at this map, we can say that the Russians managed to take the part that located on this side of this small river. So this area uh, maybe is under the Russians. Um, also, there was an update that the Russians destroyed this bridge, this one. Uh, there was, as soon as the, uh, we can say that Gorsk is also called on falls, the Russians started to bomb the road between Lysychansk and Seversk heavily. They shell it and f um, with everything they have. Furthermore, there was some helicopter operation. There was few helicopters in this area. And furthermore, there was an update that um, some kind of Ukrainian co uh, convoy was destroyed somewhere in this area. Uh, so it was like separate news without any connections and so on. But as I see, as I see all these things, um, like we can say that th these three stories, like uh, taking of Virka Kamnyanka, or at least uh, establishing some control by commanders, uh, helicopters in this area, the uh, destroying of this bridge and destroying of this column is this uh, few stories, uh, different stories of the same picture. Mm, I'm not saying that it's true. I'm not saying that it's true. Furthermore, there was like an update that the Russians started some intelligence in battle, or like reconnaissance in, in combat around uh, Verkhny Kamiansky, around Lysychansk oil refinery. So I understand that uh, the thing that is really true that the Russians, before f moving further to Lysychansk agglomeration, they start their offensive operation towards this, towards this uh, Lysychansk oil refinery. Mm. So. About Virkhan Kamyanka, I can't tell you for 100% that it's true, because there were no more updates about this situation. But, but as I see, as I understand, if we're talking about the distance from Mikolaevka, from Vavcharovka towards Virkhan Kamyanka, uh, it's impossible to get there using the tanks or trucks or like on the foot. It's impossible to get there. But the update was that somewhere in this area, there were a lot of Russian helicopters and that those helicopters destroyed the bridges and the roads that connects Lysychansk and this oil refinery. And one of the most important that there was uh, this bridge was destroyed. There is a picture like this bridge was geolocated. And, uh, and this is the only bridge. If we take a look at this map, it's like this bridge shows a better picture. This is the road T1302. You see this uh, road and this bridge was destroyed. And now, this situation uh, corresponds with the situation with Verkhomyanka. So you see that this is the only one road that connects to the Lysychansk. So if the situation with Verkhomyanka true, so we can say that the Russians destroyed this bridge just with one purpose, not to allow the reinforcement from Lysychansk um, agglomeration, like the convoy with their heavy tanks or heavy equipment air, uh, armored vehicles to get there to push the Russians back from this area. So this is the reason why this bridge was destroyed. Furthermore, there was a real update, confirmed real update, that the Russians destroyed some convoy here. So I understand that the Ukrainians sent some forces towards this area. If we are talking about the Russians media, they announced the situation that the Ukrainians started retreating from Lysychansk, like there was another mutiny in the army that some forces uh, regroup, takes their heavy equipment and start running from this area. To tell the truth, I don't believe this information because uh, I be I can believe this information if there was like uh, 100 soldiers, even 1,000 soldiers, but I'm not sure that uh, the forces in this chance will allow them to, to take their uh, heavy vehicles and just to escape if they know that this uh, equipment is so important here in this chance before the final battle with the Russians. So I think that the Ukrainians did really send some convoy, but for the purpose to protect this area near uh, near uh, uh, Lysychansk oil refinery, but they were defeated. So I see, I see that something happened near Verkhny Kamyanka. And as far as I understand for now, that this area, as we discussed the, uh, in the previous videos, becomes one of the most important area in this, uh, exactly in this uh, specific uh, um, period of battle for Lysychansk agglomeration. Because 
by taking this town, by taking this area, we can say about total encirclement of Lysychansk agglomeration. Now let's talk a little bit about the report of Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation. They announced that uh, in Lysychansk agglomeration, particularly exactly in this area between Lysychansk oil refinery, Azot plant, Barivsk, Lysychansk itself, Novodruzhsk, Privilia, is around 8,000 soldiers and around 700 heavy equipment including tanks and just armored vehicles. And also they added that uh, Gorska Zotoy Cauldron is not cleared yet. Uh, that means that there are still around 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers who blocked in this area. There are no clashes in this area. Uh, if we take a look at the Russian sources map, either Russian source map or the Ukrainian sources map updates this area as this area is under the Russians. But uh, and it's under the Russians, there are no clashes, but for now, uh, there are still some Ukrainians. And as far as I understand, it's just a regular procedure to uh, to work, to handle uh, all this process of surrendering and so on, because it's 2,000 soldiers, it's not the day, uh, if you remember when there was a situation with Azov style, they were the same, almost the same quantity, and those soldiers were surrendering like for a few days, so it's like this process, um, should be done like all the army groups should be separated into small groups like 50 100 people and they should like, um, should surrender one by one so it's a big job big long process so as i understand this is the situation what is happening right now in gorska zotoe according to the russian sources there are around 1800 ukrainian soldiers around 120 national battalions uh, the right sector it calls and around 80 foreigners and uh, so this is the army uh, it's of course all the numbers are softly so but this situation in gorska zotoe further that in the area between uh, mirna dalina padlisna Alaskutovka, uh, around 800 soldiers already surrendered. So this is the current picture and current situation around Lysychansk. And as you can see, uh, the situation near Verkhnikaminska, and to be more precise, near Verkhnikaminka, is very important. Uh, of course, the, for me, it's a very big question how the Russians managed to get there. Uh, I think that the only one explanation might be that they use their famous uh, VDV paratrooper operation. This is the only case, and the one of the most fact that says that it might be like that is that there were a lot of helicopters who were attacking everything that were moving in this area. In particular, they destroyed a lot of bridges, a lot of roads, and a lot of convoys that were moving towards this area to support. I repeat myself that it's not 100% information. There is so much many information from this area, so sometimes it's very hard to understand who to believe or not, because they're a real mess. And as I understand, there are a lot of panic. If you're talking about the Ukrainians, there are a lot of panic. I am sure that a lot of forces are trying and want to retreat to escape this area. There, uh, there, that's why there are a lot of lies in this area. If we're talking about the Russians, of course, there are a very big woe effect, of course. Uh, they're also like they're we can say that they're uh, they maybe they don't understand even what they're doing uh, because of this woe effect they're just pushing and if this operation this coming um, like helicopter operation is true I'm, I must say that it was like it, it's, it was cool it really it was really cool if they did this because if the Russians took control of Verkhnikaminka, then they destroyed this bridge. You see this river. Of course, the Ukrainians have no possibility how to attack this area just only from Verkhnikaminska. But furthermore, they need to cross somehow the river. There are just fields. And of course, the Russians, they have some possibilities with their special forces to establish some position there. And uh, meanwhile, the Russians would attack everything around and so on. But... Anyway, the main purpose, if this situation is true and if this operation uh, was and if the Russians control Verkhnikaminka, anyway, the main idea, of course, to send there some troopers, some special forces. Meanwhile, the main forces from Mikolaevka or uh, Rai Alexandrovka or Vavcharovka should move towards this position because, of course, even if there are 200, for example, soldiers, uh, the Russian special forces, they are not able to stay right in front of this oil refinery and uh, right in front of the 
being surrounded by the Ukrainians from every single side. So I'm, I think that they are able to stand there maybe one day, maybe two, but not more. Of course, so that's why, of course, they need the reinforcement of the main group with tanks and so on. The main idea of this operation was, of course, when they stand to cut this road and to establish physical control over this road and not to allow the Ukrainians to retreat, like to block this area, to block the main road totally. So the only one way for now is using the Bilagorovka and then moving towards this Siversk Danias River, towards Siribrianka and from Siribrianka to Siversk. But this area, I'm not sure that this area is safe because there are a lot of Russians and they're just waiting for their time to start their offensive operation towards this area and to destroy everything that moves here. Furthermore, there is the source that announced uh, about taking Verkhnikaminka are saying and very seriously are saying about uh, attack and about offensive operation towards this Bilogorovka. So uh, we're gonna. I'm sure that by then this this weekend we're gonna find out everything and understand everything about Verkhnikaminka and Bilogorovka. Furthermore, I would like to tell that uh, Verkhnikaminka. Um, yes, it will be very great big. Uh, success if the Russians are able to establish control over this small town and to enforce this area. But um, even though they can leave this area as well, for now the Russians just need time. They need time to bring forces, to bring artillery, to understand everything, to establish fire control over, over every single road. And after that uh, they can continue. Of course, Verkhny Kamenka, of course, is, is something unreal furthermore uh, furthermore uh, i don't understand the note that some russian sources are saying that the russians managed to enter uh lisichansk agglomeration and something tells me that this as i told you this icon uh, is softly put on the map something tells me that the russians moved from vayavcharovka towards malarizans somewhere here because there was another update another update on the map that the russians also attacked this area as well so somehow they were shelling there as you see there is also one road one bridge from around this river it's not a very big river but the russian also with those helicopters destroyed this bridge and of course, one uh, the idea of that operation might be that the Russians really are planning to attack Malarizansova. And from this point of view, this is not a very good idea because we discussed the situation yesterday. Of course, in case if the Russians are able to block oil refinery, in this case, this operation is okay. No problem with this. No problem. But if they're planning to attack between two industrial zones, it might be a very nice trap prepared by the ukrainians so and that's it about lisichansk agglomeration a lot of updates a lot of things we will follow and i'm sure that by the end of this weekend we're gonna see and gonna understand everything that happens there now let's discuss two more important updates that we have from the front lines and one of them it was really uh, i was shocked when i heard this news when i got this update that according to some russian sources the russians managed to cross Siversky Danisk river near Izum. you see this is Izum, and uh, if you remember this is balaklea and if you remember there is a line between chepil protopopivka and zavgorodnia petrovska this area where the ukrainians have a lot of forces and using these uh, positions they are trying to cross this river and to attack uh, siversk um, izum from the flank from the back right uh, trying to stop or uh, uh, to reduce the speed of the ukrainian russian forces that located on izum bridge so and uh, we discussed many times that this that the russians should find a solution how to fix this headache and, um, my projection was that the russians if we take Verkhnya, according to the Russian sources, is under the Russians. If we take a look at this map just one more time to to see the picture, you see that. And my projection was that the Russians need to move from Velika uh, Kamushivaha towards Grushivaha, and from this point, uh, somehow they need to cross the river, and somehow they need to try to encircle forces that located on this line. Uh, from Balakle and from Grushuvaha, uh, from Balakle from the north and from Grushuvaha from the south. So somehow they need to solve this issue. And this morning we got update that the Russians managed to cross the Siversk Danish River somewhere here and that they established control over Nordsevka, this town. So they have bridgehead 
on this side of the river so i understand that the next week uh, it, uh, we were talking about this group these russians they will try to clear zaliman and they will try to move towards chepil by the way there is another uh, peace valley or mirna dalin in this area you know that ukrainians have like the same name of town for many towns so i see that the russians open another front line in this back by the way this is a very nice position you see that it's very easy to cross there is the forest and as i see the ukrainians mm, haven't didn't protect this area well so that's why the russians crossed established some bridgehead and now i understand that they're going to attack chepil from the back and i'm sure that the ukrainians weren't preparing prepared for this operation and we'll see what's next but i understand that the russian decided to solve this issue to push ukrainians and to establish their own bridgehead on this side of the river and that will allow them to protect and uh, their flanks and the further uh, Slavyansk operation as well. Another important update uh, from Slavyansk bridgehead from this area. Uh, we discussed this bridgehead like two weeks ago, week ago. After that, we turned to Lysychansk agglomeration because there are very heavy clashes started here, starting from Toshkovka. But the most important changes on Slavyansk bridgehead is that the Russians managed to take Sidorova. We discussed this town many times. If you remember, uh, the Russians uh, established some bridgehead on this side of the river. First, they took Tetyanovka before they took Svetogorsk and Svetogorsk Lavro. Uh, then they took Priship. Then I announced, I told that the Russians, there are some heavy clashes around Sidorova. We discussed the operation on the north from Slavyansk many times. We discussed that the main town, of course, there is Imayaki and Raigradok. And this morning, we got the final confirmation that the Russians cleared Sidorova and push Ukrainians from this area. So that means I see that the next week will be very interesting because the next week there would be at least three grand battles from the Russians. The battle for Slavyansk, the battle for Lysychansk and some operation uh, to encircle the Ukrainians on the Protokopivka, Zavgorodnya, Petrovskaya, Chepil line. So they have a lot of places where they can push. They have a lot of uh, f the most important thing that they're like uh, have victories and their soldiers want to fight and if you're talking about the Ukrainians of course this their morale is very low so I don't even know what the Ukrainians are planning to do in this case the only place where Ukrainians achieved some success is this uh, territory we discussed yesterday uh, somewhere around um, uh, Pavlovka as you can see this uh, Russian source map has been a little bit updated they added this yellow uh, dots saying that this town was taken by the Ukrainians like to show on the map the progress So the Ukrainians are still attacking Yegorovka. So they're trying to attack this area from many sides um, I'm not sure still what are they're planning to do in this area What they're going to do in this area, but they're doing something for now because of the fact that they took just one town I can't tell you the real purposes and furthermore uh, I haven't heard about any plans of this area from any authorities, uh, uh, neither Ukrainian nor the Russians, about the value of this area. Yesterday we tried to understand the value, maybe it's like Volnovakha, I don't know. So this is the uh, situation around these areas. Another important update from the Zelensky office, President office, uh, there was a lot of converse, there is a lot of rumors of course uh, the russians telegram channels they public a lot of interesting stories from this from zelensky office and of course there are a lot of spies some some things is uh, not true something's fake something maybe is real and there's there are rumors that there are very um, heavy uh, conflict between Zaluzhny and and zelensky is not zelensky the president of ukraine zaluzhny the head of the ukrainian army and the main problem is that Zaluzhny were ask, was asking Zelensky to allow the Ukrainians to leave Lysychansk for many times. But uh, for now, um, we see that forces from Lysychansk haven't left. And I'll repeat that there are around 8,000 soldiers and around 700 of vehicles, including tanks and armored vehicles. So it's a very big losses. Furthermore, this is uh, 700 tanks, 700 uh, heavy equipment. That's a lot. That's a lot, and it's we can say that there are around eight BTGs who was encircled, 
and the main problem is that there is a high risk that these eight BTGs won't even fight because what is the reason to fight if the if there is only one destiny for all of them to be killed to, or to surrender so of course most of them I think will decide to surrender everybody remember situation in Mariupol everybody knows the number of forces in Mariupol before the operation and after so I'm not sure that these guys want to repeat the, the, their destiny. For now, we don't even know where is those guys from Mariupol. Of course, we know they're like in DPR, but what is going to be with them? The only thing that bad situation, of course, for the foreigners, because um, a lot of them might be, um, their destiny might be not very good. So we'll see and we'll follow. And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel want to remind you that we condemn any violence in Ukraine. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel, put your likes and enjoy your weekend. Bye bye.